Hello, today it is time to update you on my product specific no buy that I have been working on for all of 2022. So I have been doing some form of this for quite a few years now. I have gone back and forth between like full on no buys where I'm not buying anything to more of a low buy to the system I've recently been doing, which I have named a product specific no buy. So for the last few years now, I've picked out different products that I feel like I've got too many of categories where it is getting out of hand and I put them on a list and I give myself some guidelines for how I would like my shopping to go throughout the year. So for 2022, I started this one with a specific set of products and then I checked in with you guys during the summer and I let you know how that was going and we kind of changed some things up, set some new guidelines for the rest of the year and today I'm up here to update you on that final stretch and how I did. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave below the introduction video and the summertime check-in. And today I'm gonna to tell you what was on my list and where I'm at now. But I also wanna take today's video and kind of just reflect on my thoughts on my makeup collection because that's what these videos kind of are about for me. That's why I like doing no buys, just to keep a very curated collection. And I will have my inventory coming up. That'll be the last video that you see this year. We're definitely getting to the end. All this week we have just like final wrap up videos like the project pan finale, this finale, the, um, the inventory finale. So stay tuned, that's all coming. But I've been thinking about how my shopping looked this year and also what my collection looks like right now, what I want my collection to look like a year from now. And I have to say, I haven't really sat down and reflected on camera about PR this year, but if you guys remember, this was the year that I took myself off of almost every PR list. Now I'm only receiving products from select brands, which is very few. I'm very particular about what I receive. And last year at this time, I was getting box after box after box in PR. I was getting like multiple packages a day. And I was so grateful to receive those products and be able to test them out and share reviews. But at the same time, it was leading to a lot of waste. It was leading to a lot of products that I wasn't using. It was also leading to a lot of waste just in terms of the packaging that it arrives in. And I knew that was not gonna be sustainable for me to keep having a constant influx of makeup. And so I made the decision right when I moved into this new apartment that I wasn't giving my address to anyone. Like only a few brands that I knew I still wanted to receive products from have my new mailing address. Looking back on that now, I definitely agree that that was the best thing I could have done, not only for myself and for just minimizing my waste, but also for my collection. And I think you guys will see that reflected, hopefully, question mark, in the um, inventory video. I don't know what those numbers look like yet because I haven't counted, but that is gonna be coming soon. And I would say I at least feel better right now than I have in other years at this time of the year. I don't feel as overwhelmed. And I feel like most of the makeup that I reviewed this year was stuff that I bought because I was interested in it and or I thought you guys would be interested in it, which really is the goal for my channel. But that being said, I do feel like I broke a few of these no buy categories and we'll get into that. I didn't break them too bad, but I wasn't as strict as I have been in previous years. In previous years, I've been like, nope, this is on the no buy list. I'm not gonna buy a single one. Whereas this year, there were a few occasions where I was like, you know what? I really need this for a video. The video is gonna be better if I have this, I'm gonna buy it. So the first category was powder. And I'm really glad that I put this one on the list because I have just been obsessed with powder lately and I need to reel it in. And I actually feel like I have mostly because I've had it on this list and I've been telling myself, don't buy the powder. Though there are a few powders. Actually, there are a few products in every category that I have had in the back of my head, like, girl, January 1st, I'm about to buy this. And weirdly, that might sound like a bad thing, but I, I actually view it as a positive because it's allowing me to really sit with something that I want to buy and not act on it right away out of impulse. And I kind of like doing that. Like I know there are certain products that I want 
but I'm not letting myself get them right now. And I'm like, okay, eventually in January or down the road, I'll give myself permission to buy them. But sometimes even when I get to that point, like maybe I don't want them anymore. Or maybe by the time January rolls around, I'm gonna be so pumped about this product and I will know for sure that I'm making the right choice buying it. And that has always been one of the greatest benefits for this project that I do with myself, the product specific no buy, because it allows me to really sit back, not even allows, it forces me to sit back and like almost marinate on it and then come back to it like, do I really want that? Was I just influenced in the moment? Was I giving into the hype? Was it just an impulse or did I really want it? So with powder, <laughs> with powder, I did crack once, but this one I would say, this is half a powder and it's half a foundation and foundation is another category we'll get to. So my question here is I'm like, did I cheat on both or did I just cheat on one? If you would call this a powder, I cheated in powder. If you would call this a foundation, I cheated in foundation. Though the technical name is a powder foundation, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna count it towards both. But this is from Essence, and I actually have a couple other Essence products to talk about. And this is their 16-hour cover and last foundation. This ended up being a great purchase. You saw it mentioned in my 2022 drugstore favorites of the year. If you missed that video, I can leave it linked down below. But this one in particular I purchased because I was doing a full face of Essence and I was missing a foundation and I was missing a blush. So I purchased a blush. Though I did used to have an Essence blush and it broke. And that is the style of video that usually gets me to break this no buy because I'm like, oh, well, I need to buy that. And there are a couple brands I've had full face videos on my calendar to do that I've been waiting for. And those brands include NYX, Makeup Revolution, a few others where I'm like, well, I don't have a foundation from this brand, so I need to buy one, but I can't buy one right now. So sometimes in that case, I would let myself cheat just because YouTube is a job for me and I want to get this content up for you guys, especially if it's something I think would be interesting to you. And that's why I bought this, okay? Very long answer for why I bought this powder. Okay, I also had brows on this list and I specifically noted it was replacement only and I didn't do a very good job of that at all. So another Essence one, this was the Essence Brow Like a Boss Gel. Wanted to try this out for like new drugstore stuff for you guys. But also two new brow products that I just purchased. So this was like at least at the tail end of the no buy. It still counts, but I guess it's not as bad. I just purchased these because I tested them out in Friday's testing new makeup video, testing new drugstore makeup video. So this was a this was an eyebrow stamp from Ulta Beauty. It was interesting. Definitely watch the video that is up already if you want to check it out. This this was something. I I need to try it more to figure out if I love it or hate it, but it was different. At least with this purchase, it wasn't just like another eyebrow pencil. At least it was something different, you know? But I also purchased this brow gel from Milani. And in my defense, I do only have one brow gel open right now, so I guess that's better than having like a whole drawer full of them. But honestly, if I'm being honest, I just completely forgot that was on my list. And then I was like, oh man, I wasn't supposed to buy those. But that being said, for the most part throughout the year, I didn't, I didn't go overboard on brows the same way I had before. So I'm going to say that one was like a semi-success, you know? I also put lip liner on this list, but in the midpoint update, I said that it was just a low buy category, but I didn't put a cap on it. I didn't say I wasn't going to buy any lip liner. I just said, girl be good and i feel like i was i bought two lip liners in that time period i bought two new shades of the nyx lip liners i already love that formula so two new shades i didn't feel too bad about oh no no i bought three i bought three mm. dang i could have done better i could have done better i also bought the essence one again for a video the nyx ones i bought because i wanted them the essence one i bought for a trying new drugstore makeup video and i feel like doing my affordable friday series has gotten me into trouble a little bit with this because there will be new drugstore products in certain categories that are technically on my list, but I'm like, oh man, I really want to try this new Milani product since all their new products, I feel like are getting so much attention. I want to try them out see what I think, but 
Mm, that's that's where I broke the that's where I broke the no buy because I also bought the Essence lip liner and then foundation. I told myself I could buy one, but in that time period in those six months, so that could have been this one. Actually, you know what? If we rearrange it like this, this is totally cheating. But if we rearrange it like this and we call this a foundation, because it is, it is that didn't break the no buy because foundation I allowed myself one. And then I didn't buy any other powders, so technically it was all a wash and there was nothing wrong there. So let's go with that. I also said skincare backups. Since the update, I did not break this at all. I didn't buy any skincare backups. I, yeah, no, no skincare backups, which is good because skincare is tough. It's not like a powder product, like this powder foundation, even once it's expired, you can kind of use it past that date. If it's a sunscreen or even like a vitamin C serum, once it's expired, like it's gotta go. It's not gonna be working. And that actually happened to me the other day. I went to use my vitamin C serum, hadn't used it in a bit, and I pumped it out and it had fully turned orange and I was like, wow, this has gone bad. And that's why I don't like having backups. That's why I don't like having too much excess in my skincare collection because that's what ends up happening. And with skincare, you don't have that long lifespan that you do with powder products. So I don't like to collect or hoard too many of them. I also put blush on this list and good thing that I did because th this one I put in mid-year. So if you're thinking, wait, Kelly, didn't you buy a bunch of blushes? Yeah, that was before this point. But after I added blush to the no buy list, I broke it once, just once, which is not bad, okay? It's not good, but it's not bad. And it was for the Essence one for the video. It was for the video. Maybe I should link the video down below because this video was the reason I broke the no buy so much. Just kidding, just kidding. But this is their mosaic blush in the shade 40 Berry Connection. But you know what? I'm still gonna pat myself on the back for only breaking it once, unless I'm forgetting. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, wow, this video is such a fail. Okay, wait, I broke it twice. Hold on, hold on. Okay, this one too. The Burt's Bees blush, hmm, also for a video, but yeah, still. Still didn't need to get that probably. Though I really love the Burt's Bees blush, but here's the thing. Only buying two in the last six months was better than it could have been because blush has been booming. I have seen so many blush recommendations. There were so many I wanted to buy that I withheld. And so I'm gonna say it's better than it could have been. I'm glad it was on the list. I would say even cheating twice, it is better than the outcome we would have seen if I did not put that on the list. So, you know, there's that. Ooh, this next one I didn't break. I did a good job for lip oils. And I actually gave myself a cap of one and then I didn't buy any. I was very into lip oils for the full beginning of the year, especially when I was testing products out for my best drugstore lip oils video. I feel like for the later half of the year, I was just jamming with the lip oils I already had. Like I was having fun with them. I didn't really feel the need to buy any more lip oils. I have been loving some of my older lip glosses lately, some of my more tinted lip products. So I'm glad I put that one on the list and I'm glad that I didn't break that one. Going into 2023, I do want to do some form of this video again. And that's something I'll probably update you guys on somewhere mid january probably not like right away in the year but i will do a video at some point in january kind of talking about my plan for 2023 i hope you guys enjoyed this update if you did any sort of a no buy during the year let me know how it went for you but thank you guys so much for watching and i will go ahead and see you tomorrow for the next day of vlogmas bye